Hi everybody, it's Jessica at the Thomas Ford Library. Today I'm going to show you how to embroider a beautiful Regency era design. So grab your kit and let's get started. The first thing we're going to do is transfer the pattern onto our fabric. Um, and we want to make sure that it's centered in our square. So something we can do um, is take apart your hoop You'll have to unscrew it first. Put the inner circle down. Put your fabric over the top of it. And make sure it's nice and centered. Take the top, the outside part of the hoop. Um, you're probably going to have to unscrew it pretty far here. Uh, open it up. There we go. Put it down on top of the fabric and then you're gonna screw it, tighten it up a bit here. Okay, so now we can take our pattern, turn this over, and this material is thin enough that you're probably gonna be able to, if you just, like I have, put the pattern down on a table, put this over the top of it. If you have a nice lamp above you, you're gonna be able to see it through the fabric. Um, now, if you can't see it, another way is to get some painter's tape or masking tape. Um, take this paper, tape it to a window, and then put your fabric over the top of it. Um, and you can just tape it over it, and then you'll have like the sunlight coming through your window to be able to see a little bit better to transfer it. But this I can see pretty well right now. So I'm gonna put this on top and we're gonna use our Pilot Friction Pen. And you might be wondering why we're using this specific pen. So it is heat erasable. And that means that um, if you mess up, so if you mess up transferring this right now, you can take a hot iron and go over this and it will erase the marks and then you can start again. Um, so it's really helpful in doing embroidery. Now, if it gets, if your piece gets really cold, then the marks will come back, but I feel like that's not really a problem. All right, so I just finished transferring the pattern. Um, so you can take a look and just make sure you got everything. Um, and don't worry if it's not totally perfect. You know, some of my leaves aren't you know, super perfectly shaped. But, you know, if it's, if it looks like a leaf, you're doing fine. <laughs> if it's very slightly different from the pattern, that's okay. Um, you can always, when you're finished, kind of go over it a little bit if you missed a line or two, you know, just kind of by eye if you're comfortable with that. Um, or, you know, if you really don't like it, you can start again. So, but now we have it transferred and we can get started on our embroidery. So I'd like to start with the center of the flowers, which is going to be in a satin stitch. And we're using this uh, straw kind of goldish color uh, 3821. So the first thing you're gonna do is cut a length of floss about um, a foot and a half or less, because if it's too long, it's gonna get tangled. Um, and there are six strands to this floss, and we want to only use two. And for our needle size, there's not really a hard and fast rule on what size to use um, for a different number of strands, but I like to use basically the smallest one I can use that I can still comfortably thread, basically. So I would pick this one over on the right. So that needle size worked just fine for two strands. Um, so I threaded it and then I made a double knot here at the other end. Um, so we're ready to start our satin stitch. All right, we're ready to start with our satin stitch. Um, and a satin stitch is just a filling stitch. There's a couple of different ways you can do it. Um, you can either do what's called a back stitch around the shape and then do the satin stitch over the top of that, or just do the satin stitch by itself. Um, I'm gonna show you both ways in this project, but for this one, we're not gonna outline it first. 
Um, so I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start in the middle. Come up at the bottom of the circle. Go back down at the top. And come back up. We're gonna go right next to the beginning of our first stitch to the left here and go back down up at the top right next to the end of our first stitch. So we're basically just making like straight lines uh, across the shape to fill it in. And over on the sides you're gonna have to, you'll make you know shorter ones to follow the circle. Here's let's make one more. Okay, so hopefully you have a pretty good idea of how to do the satin stitch. So now our first little shape is completed. We can go ahead and make a knot at the back of your work and then uh, fill in the other circle. And then after that, we're gonna do the petals. Just in case you're not sure how to make a knot at the back of your work, I'm gonna show you. Hopefully my hand isn't making a huge shadow here. Um, so here's your thread. You're gonna kind of slip under here to make a knot. Um, and then I like to kind of put my finger here and pull, and then you're getting the knot as close to your work as possible. You know, you don't want your knot all the way out here. Um, so there's that. I'm gonna do it one more time to make it a little more secure. So for your satin stitch, um, if you messed up or you just don't like the way it looks for some reason, um, you can easily just take out the stitch and try again. Um, so you're gonna take your needle off of the thread Here's my last stitch. I'm gonna go under it like this. Just pull it through. Um, sometimes it can get tangled when you do this, so just kind of go slowly and you know pay attention to what the thread's doing. Uh, turn it over. You can see my last stitch here. Pull that through. And then, you know, let's say you like this first stitch and you wanna just keep going from there. So then you can just re-thread your needle and continue. All right, so if you're done with your little centers of your flowers, we're ready to do uh, the petals. So we take a look at our pattern again, and I know I said I was gonna show you the two different kinds of satin stitch, but apparently I lied. We're just gonna go with, um, for the petals here, in this nice salmon color, 760, right here. Um, you're gonna use three strands, and then that's gonna make your petals a little more full. So again, you're gonna go ahead and cut off a length of a foot and a half or less, and then you're going to separate out three strands. Um, I didn't mention this before because it's not as big of a deal with two strands, but I usually, after I've separated out the number that I want, so like these three, um, I then separate all of these, and because they get kind of twisted when they're in the packaging, um, so yeah, unravel, separate all three strands, kind of let them unravel on their own and then put them back together. And especially when you're doing something like the satin stitch, then it's not gonna, it'll look much more smooth and not, you know, have kind of a twisted appearance. So do that first. And then we're gonna pick a different needle. 
Um, we're going to stay away from this big one in the middle because that one you can actually embroider with all six strands. So that's just a little too big for what we're doing. Um, but you can pick just the one of the next two to the right of that. And that's going to work great for your uh, three strands. All right, so let's start on our petals. It's going to be the same idea as what we did before. So I'm going to start in the middle of this petal to kind of get the angle going here. Um, go back down at the end of it. Come back up. Yeah, so this is basically the same as what we were doing before, just a little bit of a different shape. All right, so I finished the first petal. Um, you're gonna do all the other ones the same way, just um, you're gonna be making the stitches following the length of each petal, which is why I like to do the middle one first to kind of establish that angle for all the stitches. Um, also, so I still have thread left after this first petal um, and as long as you're not too far away from your the next area you want to fill, you can go ahead and just keep going with that same uh, length of thread. You don't have to tie it off each time. So go ahead and finish all your petals and we'll meet back to do the leaves. Okay, so we should be done with our petals now. And next we're going to do uh, the leaves and those are going to be in satin stitch as well. And they're going to be in this kind of medium green color, uh, 988 here. So grab that and we're using two strands again. And we're going to be using the needle we used for the, the middle of the flower. So the one on the, the very right of your little package here. All right, let's get started on our leaves. This is going to be very similar to the other two little shapes that we filled before. Um, we're going to be following along. I'm going to start with this one. Following along the shape lengthwise. I'm going to start in the middle here. So we're done with our first little leaf here. Um, again, we just want to follow the shape of each leaf lengthwise with, with your satin stitch. And I'm actually, before I fill in the rest of the leaves, I'm going to show you um, the next stitch for like the, the stem slash vine here um, because it's getting later and I don't want to lose my light for this video. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do the little stems or vines. Here, um, we're gonna be doing the back split stitch, which is a variation of the split stitch. We're gonna be using two strands again, and you wanna use this uh, 3348, kind of a light yellow green color. So remember earlier when I said that you could, um, when you separate your floss, separate each piece and kind of let it unravel and put it back together, you definitely want to do that before you do this stitch. So um, I've done that. We're going to get started here. All right, let's start over here. I'm going to make just kind of a regular stitch here. Um, don't make it too long, probably about like that, because um, we're going to be going around this curve, and you, if your stitches are too big, it's going to look kind of jagged. So. Here's your first stitch. Then you're gonna come up um, about one stitch length ahead of where you just ended your first stitch. 
come up through and then you are going to go down in the middle of your first stitch so in between those two strands go back down so see this is why it's called the split stitch because you are splitting the stitch so there's your second stitch and let's keep going here Again, back down through the middle. And this is a variation of the split stitch because normally, so normally you would uh, come up through the middle, like from the bottom, but to me that's a lot harder and this is easier, especially if you're a beginner. So I can't really see what I'm doing. There we go. All right. Okay, so that was our back split stitch for our vines and I'm going to go ahead and finish up the rest of the leaves and the rest of the vines and I will meet you back when we are ready to finish our work. Okay, now we're done with our embroidery and we are going to uh, finish the back of the hoop. So um, go ahead and if you see any of your pen marks still on the piece, you get a hair dryer blow some hot air on it and they will disappear. Um, if you need to iron the piece, you can do that as well. Um, and that'll also get rid of the lines. But if you're ironing um, and you're going over the thread here, you wanna make sure you have some kind of buffer in between the iron um, and your work. So like something like a piece of flannel would be good. So then um, once that's all done, get it nice and centered and tight in the hoop. And then, I already did this, but you're going to trim the fabric along the outside to um, at least a quarter inch. Um, half inch is better, but depending on, um, you know, the shape your fabric is in, it might be a little shorter, which is totally fine. So now we're going to take our white thread and we're going to wrap it around twice, wrap it around the hoop twice, and this is how we're going to measure um, how much we need. So enough to basically wrap around the hoop twice. Um, and once you cut that, you're going to separate two strands out, and that's what we're going to use. It's going to take a little longer to separate those strands from um, such a long piece to start with, but just um, be patient and you'll get there. So we are going to take our two strands here. You do not need a knot on the end. And I'm gonna start, just go through the fabric like this. And you wanna leave a tail of um, probably like four inches. Let's say four inches. So leave that there. And as you are stitching here, you wanna make sure that that stays and doesn't pull through because you want that to be left at the end. So we're just gonna do what's called a running stitch. We're just gonna go back in. And these can be pretty big stitches, that's fine. They don't need to be close together. Thank you. 
once you get all the way around with your thread, um, take the two ends, you're gonna pull. It's got a drawstring. You might wanna pull one side and then the other here. Just make it as tight as you can. And then you're gonna make a little bow. Trying to hold it as tight as you can. And then, yeah, just trim the end. Mine is not very tight, so I'm probably gonna do it again. But that is how, that's the first step here for finishing. Okay, so the next step for finishing, um, we're gonna take our felt. And then um, from that long length of white floss that we had, take another two strands and you are gonna do a knot at the end or a double knot. And basically we're just gonna be sewing this felt on. So we wanna make this like as even around as possible. Although it is gonna be on the back of the piece so it's not a huge deal if it's not even. All right, so we're gonna start at the top. Um, we're going to, or I like to hide the knot. So I'm gonna go this way first through the felt and make sure you're not too close to the edge. Um, where I am right now is fine, but if you're too close, then the thread might um, like rip through the edge. Okay, so we've gone through here, um, and now we're going to go back this way, and we're going to go through both the felt and the fabric. Sorry, I'm trying to stay in the screen here. Okay. And again, through the felt and through the fabric. And as you're going, um, just kind of make sure that it is um, even around the edges. You might find that you're, you're pulling too much this way or the other way and just kind of adjust as you go. And as you can see, so this is a long piece of thread, um, just go a little more slowly because it can get tangled. Okay, so once you come all the way back to the beginning, um, yeah, mine doesn't look super nice and it's okay if yours doesn't either, it's just the back. <laughs> so um, I'm gonna go through both the felt and the fabric again here. And before I pull it all the way through, I'm gonna slip the needle under that loop to make a knot. And I'm gonna, just on the surface here, go under that again. Go under the loop, make another knot. And you can do it another time or as many times as you feel like you need to to make it secure. Um, and then, at the end and you are all finished.